I've always been a warrior. As a child, I remember hearing a joke about a chicken and panicking. Did he make it across or what? Yes, hello, welcome, uh, welcome, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Pierre Novelli, I'm your host. Welcome to Live at the Pleasance uh, in association with audible.co.uk. Yeah. Those are the guys from the start of all those podcasts we like. With that annoying but very effective jingle. Uh, we are live on Pleasance's uh, sort of TV, YouTube channel, and also on Facebook. Uh, if any of you feel like being spied on, uh, we're all on Facebook. And uh, we're live, of course, here, physically as human beings, in the Ace Dome in Pleasance in Edinburgh. Yes. All right, we're going to get the show started. There's, uh, keep it moving along, a nice momentum for the whole thing. We're going to bring on uh, an award-winning comedian. She's back at the Fringe this year uh, at the Pleasance after a sellout smash run last year. Now, please give a warm Pleasance Live welcome to Samantha Baines. Go mad. <laughs> Hello. How are we all? Are we well? Yes, you all look very well. Um, hi, my name's Samantha Baines. Branding, thank you. Um, what can I tell you about me? Uh, well, I love comedy. Uh, I inherited a love of comedy from my dad. I also inherited his lack of chin. <laughs> Can't wear a bike helmet, it's got no purchase. From the front, I just look like a massive thumb. Well, a massive thumb crossed with Alan Rickman from Harry Potter. <laughs> so that's a little bit about me. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, I love science. Any science fans in? <laughs> Three of you, awesome. Um, I love science and I love spelling and I love celebrating amazing women. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I am a woman. Shock. Um, I'm a woman. It turns out a woman is a lot like a man, but with a little bit more woo added. That's a spelling joke. Oh, come on, guys. I'm going to pay attention in this show. Um, I also, I love quoting films as well. Do we know that film, Jerry Maguire? You know, show me the money. And we know that one. And my favourite line from that film is when Rene Zellweg is like, you had me at hello. Do you know that line? You had me at hello. She's like a cold caller's dream. <laughs> she, you had me at hello. Um, but I do love science. I'm doing a show about the lost women of science. And I found out about this amazing woman called Sally Ride. Anyone heard of Sally Ride? Yeah. yeah thank you for answering so succinctly. <laughs> Um, yes, I have Sam. But great. Well, Sally Ride, if you don't know, Sally was born over in America in 1951. And in 1983, she became the first American woman in space. The third ever woman in space and the first LGBT astronaut, right? But uh, in the 80s, being the first American woman in space, Sally had to put up with quite a lot. And they did a press conference before she went to space for seven days. And the press asked Sally questions like, Sally. Sally, will you wear a bra in space? <laughs> I like to think she replied with, well, with questions like these, I need all the support I can get. <laughs> they, also, they also asked Sally, Sally, will the flight affect your reproductive organs? I like to think she replied with, no, but this question may affect yours. <laughs> She's a spunky lady. Um, and it wasn't just the press that she had to put up with. She also had to put up with some of the people at NASA. Because Sally went to space for seven days. And before she did, the engineers at NASA asked her if a hundred tampons would be enough. <laughs> for seven days. <laughs> that is the equivalent of about 15 tampons a day. Uh, so now respectful pause whilst any men in the audience can ask the women they're with if that's too many. <laughs> that's too many tampons, guys. What do they think Sally Ride was like a tampon machine gun? Like, <laughs> next, <laughs> next, 
Next, there's a hundred of these. <laughs> Next, poor Sally, right? Poor Sally. And it got me thinking, like, how much blood did NASA think we released for them to offer her a hundred tampons? And I didn't know either, so I looked it up, right? And on the NHS website, it says that the average woman releases between two and three tablespoons of blood, so not very much, right? But also, tablespoons? <laughs> Who decided to measure it in tablespoons? <laughs> Like, if it's good enough for Mary Berry. No. No. Also, who did that experiment, right? Because you can imagine my husband comes home, I've got the cutlery drawer out, I'm just hunkered over a tablespoon. I'm like, you all right, honey? Oh, just measuring my menstrual blood for science. Do you want a cup of tea? Don't use the teaspoons, I tried those first. Poor Sally, right, poor Sally. And uh, I also found out about these tampons in space, right? They, they tied them together for her, apparently. Because things fly off in space, don't they? So they tied them together. And I had to think about that for a minute, because I was like, would you tie them string to string or string to shaft? You know, the tampons. Because if you tied them string to string, you'd get a sort of tampon balloon cluster, wouldn't you? <laughs> so every time Sally Ride reached for a tampon, she looked like the old man in Up. Because, because if you tied them string to shaft, you'd just get a sort of long tampon rope, wouldn't you? Like a tampon lasso. Uh, I actually tried to make one of those as a prop. It's very expensive. It's a luxury. Um, but it would be a tampon lasso. But actually, that could be quite useful, couldn't it? Because films about space, they're always showing us that astronauts just drift off, don't they? You know, like George Clooney in Gravity just drifts off. So Sally Ride would be like, hang on, George. Let me get my tampon lasso. <laughs> and George Clooney would catch it and Sally would be like, stick the end tampon up your ass and I'll reel you in. <laughs> Just George Clooney being reeled into the International Space Station. like. So there we go. I think we found out a lot about Sally Ride. Uh, <laughs> that's all I have time for. You guys have been lovely. I'm Samantha Baines. Goodbye. Samantha Baines, everyone. Give it up. Uh, make sure you catch her show, uh, Woman, a High Flyer and a Flat Bottom at Bunker One in the courtyard, 3.30 p.m. every day from now on to the end of the Fringe. I'm joined now by a man for whom the word flaneur may well have been invented. Uh, please welcome the suave, sophisticated comedy connoisseur, Marcel Lucan. There was a slight delay from the crowd. Marcel? Why did that occur? I they think, think I'm actually in France. The time difference, yes. Exactly, I mean, they think be. we must leave a time. I think it's, Brexit means that they can afford to wait a few seconds longer before giving you due respect. Brexit is no excuse for anything. Agreed. Marcel, ça va? Oui, ça va bien, merci et toi? Oui, ça va. Est-ce que vous avez un bon fringe? Non, on peut bien, oui. Oui, d'accord. Et maintenant, c'est beau aussi? Oui, oui. T'es resté, t'es fatigué? Oui, oui, fatigué. Oui, bien sûr, fatigué. Oui, oui. Ah, Marcel, you just arrived in Edinburgh yesterday. <laughs> just read the book. <laughs> you, you just arrived in Edinburgh yesterday. How have you acclimatized to the Scottish weather? It's actually, I arrived and it's uh, sunshine. Yeah? It's the last thing I expected. Is it to catch you off guard? A little, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Don't expect that at all. Like I'm in the middle of a festival, I yeah. expect misery. <laughs> In every way, in the sky, yeah. on the ground, everywhere. Yeah, well, speaking of misery, your show this year uh, gives the audience a chance to share their complaints and their misery with you, doesn't it? Sure. Uh, what are some of the best uh, bits of misery and, and gripe that you've been, uh, you've been given by your crowd? Uh, last night, actually, night one, quite superb. A man whose worst amorous experience, he goes to a party, they play the game truth or dare, he was there to leave. <laughs> Does not get a lot more tragic than that. <laughs> I've had, uh, on the tour, there was a man who was uh, digging a grave in the rain. Right. And then fell into the grave. 
And he was working alone. Oh my God. Absolutely. It's like something from Fargo. I know. He was only helped when persons who were passing saw a man trying to clamber out of a grave. <laughs> who the fuck helps something <laughs> coming out of a grave? That's and helps yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah. Instead mm. of stamping it back down to hell. Sure. Yeah. There was a teacher who had a child vomiting through a clarinet. <laughs> Some of these are physically <laughs> impossible, you think, but no, it's, it's but a fascinating insight into the British way of life. Yeah. And, if, and if it was a jazz clarinet, it's about the vomit he wasn't doing, rather than the vomit he was doing. <laughs> um, so you've just been, yeah, sorry. <laughs> We're, this is for us. Yeah. Um, Can we do this without them? We certainly, sure. certainly, certainement. Uh, you've just finished a 30-day tour of the UK. Absolutely. W were any of the locations particularly memorable that you visited? No. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, finally, to wrap up, what, uh, what will you be doing to survive your run here at the Fringe? I don't run anywhere. I saunter. <laughs> um, at the run of shows, the, the, uh, to survive, well, I, I believe I've achieved every artist's dream of Edinburgh Fringe uh, is to arrive halfway through the festival doing only a small run of shows and of last year's show. <laughs> that is the dream. It's perfect. That is the dream. Ladies and gentlemen, Marcel Lucan. Marcel Lucan's wine list is on at the Queen Dome from the 15th to the 27th of August at 8.20 p.m. Now, it's our next It's downstairs act, in two hours, so just wait. Downstairs in two hours, quite right. And if you're watching abroad, not two hours. Paul Swan. <laughs> our, ne our next act on the show today has only been on the scene for a few years, but he's one of the brightest newcomers in the pack and is the current English Comedian of the Year. Uh, so here at the Pleasance with his debut show, A Boy Named Pew, uh, please give it up for Josh Pew! Hello. Hello! Hello there, yeah, I am Josh Pew. Not my real name. That's a stage name. My real name is Johnny Show Business. <laughs> yeah. thought, thought that was a bit too flushy, better take it down a notch. But my comedy is a little bit weird. Right, it's not very weird, it's just a little bit weird. You know like when you accidentally kiss your dad on the lips? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And you're like, Merry Christmas, Dad. And he's like, oh, get off. It's the middle of June. <laughs> Stop coming to my work. <laughs> and I'm, I'm doing a show, uh, and I'd like to perform for you an extract from that show, which I like to call, Jokes Are Thought Of Whilst Hoovering. <laughs> so, I had a careers advisor at school, right, and he used to have this saying. He used to say, don't dress for the job you've got, dress for the job you want. Now, I say careers advisor, later found out it was a mechanic dressed up as a careers advisor. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the end of that section. <laughs> I've got a very small house, mainly laminate flooring. <laughs> I, uh, is anyone ever had the heart broken? Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. I, um, no, I have as well. I'm leading into a story about it. I, um, <laughs> I've, had my, I've had my heart broken once, right? And I always thought that watching the person you love leave on a train or an aeroplane would be the worst thing in the world, but it's not. You know what's worse than that? Watching the person you love leave on a canal barge. <laughs> oh, that's agony. Watching... <laughs> Watching as the love of your life drifts away from you at three miles an hour. <laughs> oh. What's worse than that is if to get home, you have to walk in the same direction that the barge is travelling. <laughs> Just end up walking parallel to it. Watching them build a new life through a porthole. That is true pain. <laughs> now, has, has anybody else ever wondered, what is it about learning to play the accordion which so often leads to homelessness. <laughs> That's me hoovering the stairs. That's when I wrote that one. I am. Um, I, I would love 
to be a musical person, right? I, I love it. You know, like you know, like on the X Factor. You know, when somebody comes out and they're like a fishmonger. Stay with me. And you think this guy's going to be rubbish, but then he sings and it's amazing and he surprises everybody. I'd love to experience that emotion, right? But I can't sing. So what I've done is got myself an interview at a fishmonger's. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to turn up dressed as a pop star and like spandex leggings and sunglasses. Everyone's going to be thinking, who's this lad? He can't mung fish. <laughs> what they don't know is, I've been practicing up in my bedroom, filleting cod. And I'm going to smash it. I said it was weird. So, I, uh, <laughs> I'd say about this uh, argument I got into a couple of weeks ago, because right? I'm, I'm quite a pathetic guy. And I was going to cross the road, right? And this guy, he'd indicated, he was in the car, he indicated to turn, but then he didn't turn. And I stepped and he nearly ran me over. Right, um, and this guy just pulled over, wound the window down, and started shouting at me, really shouting at me for no reason. Now I don't know where this came from, but I just went, "Fuck off, Baldy." <laughs> now this guy was not bold. <laughs> he was not even close to being bold. So he quite rightfully said, "I'm not even bold." <laughs> to which I replied, "You're lying to yourself, mate." <laughs> he was so confused, he just drove off. But I like to think he got home to his wife that night and said, do you think I'm going bold? And she said no, but in a way that he still didn't believe her. <laughs> and hopefully the stress of the whole thing will make him go bold. That's, that's what I'm hoping. I, um, I think the best time to commit suicide <laughs> would be at the start of a murder mystery evening. <laughs> Just to... Just to test the actor's improv skills. Like, I'm out of here, deal with this. <laughs> so I, I wrote that whilst I was changing a duvet cover. <laughs> you guys have been really nice. My name's Josh Pugh, keep supporting live comedy. I mean, having said that, there's some great stuff on YouTube. So if you, if, if you, if you can't be asked, just watch it on there. My name's Josh Pugh, see you again, thank you. That was Josh Pugh and his show, A Boy Named Pugh, is on at the Pleasance Courtyard, Bunker One, uh, every day at 7.15 p.m. Now, uh, I'm delighted to be joined by double Emmy Award-winning U.S. comedian Sarah Schaefer, who is making her Edinburgh debut this year at the Pleasance Courtyard. Thanks very much for joining us, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, thank you for, uh, after, you know, winning two Emmys and so on, mm -hmm. uh, getting over your... Uh, it must be terrible nerves appearing on uh, Facebook um, Live with us here. Yes, um, I'm <laughs> really After what nervous. you're used to doing. I'm so nervous. Yeah, well, I'm, thank, thank you for, for overcoming. I always get nervous, though, for real. Really? <laughs> Please don't hate me. Like, that's what's oh, in my right. head. Oh, right, okay. They hate me. Look at them. Oh, I just, I, I start off assuming they hate me, and yeah. then anything above yeah. that is a real win. <laughs> uh, now, this is your first Fringe. Yes. How have you found it? It's great. Um, the rooms are all, well, this room is frigid. Mm. Uh, compared to the other rooms I've, I've been in. And Mo most of in. them are, yeah. Uh, for some reason, all the rooms are 1,000 degrees. Yeah. Um, and But this one is cold. I'm actually cold in here compared to the other ones, so it's yeah. good. But I really enjoy it. I think it's uh, an amazing city and uh, such an incredible experience. I, uh, a very good, uh, talented friend of mine, William Seward, has described the way Edinburgh looks as, like, evil Athens. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Which is pretty good, is it all black okay, pillars? Yeah, and yeah, yes, yes. Everything's real dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of American comics here sort of start their shows by apologizing for Donald Trump or uh, sort of yeah. having to mention him. Mm -hmm. uh, but you've already been uh, talking to him on Twitter, haven't you? Yeah, I talk to him just once in a while. Yeah. I have him blocked, actually. But oh, really? Sometimes I can tell something he's done something because everyone's like freaking out. So I, I yeah. click past the the block wall and I see what he said. You sense the general fear in the yeah. entire world's population. Yeah, and sometimes I just lash out at him. Do you think we're gonna nixon him? Are you guys gonna nixon him out of there? Um, Is he gonna cry like ooh. a crazy person and get into a helicopter and fly away? I, I hope we can impeach him quickly. Yeah. Um, but for some reason, there's a lot of politicians who, uh, th who are fine with him. There's a weirdly high number. <laughs> 
Um, and <laughs> we need to get some political will going to get rid of him. But um, yeah. I mean, I just I, every single day something else happens that I'm like, this is it. So you can't you can't deny it now. Yeah. Uh, and it just never seems to change. I, I <laughs> I've stopped thinking that because I remember that people like John McCain and all the other politicians who mm -hmm. are supposed to suddenly go, wait a minute, he's insane. <laughs> Uh, have hung out with him in private. Mm -hmm. So they've already seen way worse yeah. stuff than what we're being yeah. drip fed. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think he eats hamsters. He just bites the heads right off. Yeah. <laughs> he swallows them whole. Yeah. Like a snake. Yeah. He, he like eats a deer. He like dislocates his, <laughs> yeah. his jaw and he's and, like. Argh. And then you hear him. Um, <laughs> After a meal like this, the president won't feed for an entire week. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sometimes yeah. his neck does look like he just ate a deer. Yeah. I don't mean to body shame the guy, but he's just, he doesn't look healthy. Well, if he was a snake, he'd be in trouble, wouldn't he? Because yeah. he wouldn't be able to do some of his presumably favorite <laughs> salutes. Uh, he'd just go up like this. He'd just go up. Yeah. People would go, yeah. is that, are you trying to sympathize with Nazis or yeah. you just have a sore neck? Yeah. Uh, now, the title of the show this year is uh, Little White Box. Yeah. Now, I, I, people might not get that reference. Could you explain? Um, well, I didn't, gosh, I can't believe I didn't think of it ahead of time, but um, apparently people think that's a reference to my genitalia. Um, <laughs> really? But it's okay. actually a reference to a, a poem about Jesus that I was taught growing up. So right. there's a little bit of a disconnect there, but um, I like uh, people not knowing what to ex expect when they come see me perform, so okay. that's fun. So you're fine with people sitting there going, well, when are the genitals coming? When are you talking about your vagina? No, um, a, I don't. I don't. I hate to break it to you, but I don't mention it during the show. And the show's to do with your, your Southern Baptist upbringing. Yes, my religious upbringing, what it feels like to be an American right now, sure. um, which is great. Uh, so it's a real cheerful show. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it's about dying and wanting to die. Uh, because nice. Because of the aforementioned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it, it's pretty silly. It's fun. Nice. Um, Have you taken any tricks uh, in performance from crazy preachers? Um, Do you close your eyes and raise your hands in the air a lot? Yeah, I, uh, well, I just try to get people um, in a frenzy, you yeah. know? I try to get people crying, falling to the ground, speaking in tongues. Yeah. Like that's uh, that's the kind of effect my comedy has yes. on people. Yeah. So <laughs> no. people's people's legs don't hurt anymore. I, I would just appreciate a light chuckle. Sure. Um, just right now, please. Yes, thank you. <laughs> 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 Guys, that's uh, Sarah Schaefer. Little White Box is on at the Pleasance That in the courtyard, 7 p.m. every night. Uh, thank thank you, you very much, Sarah thank Schaefer. You guys. Thank you. Time to head back to the stage now. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> the little white box ninja. Uh, <laughs> back to the stage now. These guys are back at the fringe for a third time with their unique brand of deliciously dark and inventive comedy every night in the Pleasance above in the courtyard at 10.20 p.m. Please welcome Gaines Family Gift Shop. Thanks so much for having us. Hello, uh, yeah. Yeah, we're Gaines Family Gift Shop, and uh, we don't usually use microphones, so let's see how this works. I mean, Woo! let's just, yeah, let's keep it like that. Absolutely cool. smashed it. Uh, yeah, Thanks hi, yeah. Us. Uh, we're Gaines from the Gift Shop. This is Ed. Hi. Uh, he's got a dead mum. What else? So. <laughs> um, and I'm Kath, the woman of the group. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to be doing sketches for you, is that all right? Yeah. Oh, thank God. Because that's all we can do. <laughs> What are you doing? I'm trying to get these two fleas to fuck. Oh. <laughs> it's really difficult though. This one keeps losing its erection, so there's not a lot I can. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Go on, lad. <laughs> oh, it's, it's just blood now. <laughs> Sauce. Always a lot of love for the fleas on yeah. that one. Yeah, <laughs> real sympathy for the fleas. <laughs> Poor guys. Um, with this one, I don't really know how we're going to do it. There's a lot of movement and we didn't really think about it. All right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Um, I, I'll, uh, we're going to be sat down, but we obviously haven't got any chairs. So I'll, I'll say a line and that'll let you know where we are, where the, where the sketch is set. And then it's just quite subtle. So 
Hopefully we'll pick up on it. So I'll, I'll just yeah. I'll do that now, yeah? Yeah, okay. Okay. <clears throat> oh, what a lovely plane. <laughs> okay, can you tell everyone else where we are? That'd be great. Thanks very much, mate. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, you all right? Yeah. Sorry, I'm just a um, nervous flyer. Oh, sorry. no. Oh, shit. So, I just didn't swear. Sorry. I oh, know. <laughs> oh, shit. I'll do that again. Oh, no. So, sorry. Oh, no. Oh, I, used to, I used to be scared of flying as well, but then I, you know, I grew up, so... <laughs> 29, 29 years old. It's rude, sorry, sorry. I can uh, help, uh, help talk you through it if you want. Uh, yeah, anything to help, yes, yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, okay, okay, I'll, I'll talk you through it, and then there's, it's, usually it's the noises that are the issue. So it's the noise of the, of the plane, you don't know what that is, and then that makes you go, what's happening, what are the noises? Oh no, please help me, oh my God. It's fine, it's fine, I read a lot of websites, so I'll, I'll do a little act out for you. So imagine this, this is the plane here. Yeah? Uh -huh. That's it. Hello, that's you. And there's just me in here as well. Hello. Uh -huh. uh, so it goes. It's normal, isn't it? It's a car with wings. It's fine. Yeah? Just a normal noise. Don't worry about it. And then it goes like that. And it goes fast. And you're like, oh no, what's going on here? Oh, bloody hell, no, thank you very much. That's right, it's got to go that fast because it's got to take off. It's got to go fast to take off. It can go faster, it can go slower, but it'll still take off. It's all fine. And then it goes. And then he goes like that. And then it goes up, and you're like, oh no, thanks, please. But it's got to go up, so you've got to get to bloody Benidorm or wherever you're going, don't you? Yeah. You've got to get there, so you've got to go up to get there. So, and then it does that bit. And you're like, well, it's happening, but it's going up still. And then you hear that. The wheels retracting. Yeah. So the wheels okay. retracting. It's fine. It's got to do that because it's got to be streamlined, doesn't it? So, so then, then it sort of plateaus out like that, and then everything's it's, uh, just plain sailing from there, really, or uh, flying, as I like to call it. So. <laughs> this is actually helping. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we appear to have hit a mild bit of turbulence. Just a little bit of turbulence. Nothing to worry about. Turbulence is where there is a, um, I think it's a hot pocket of air under the. Oh my god, we're all gonna die! I'm so sorry! I'm so sorry! Us. Yeah. The uh, <laughs> uh, if anyone thinks that that was very mean, I hate flying. So it's not punching down; it's punching in <laughs> to my own to my own head. But if you go to the doctors, you can just they just give you Valium. Um, okay. So thank you uh, so much for having us. Yeah. Thanks very Have much. Have a great fringe. Don't do anything. I don't do anything. Don't do anything. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. <laughs> that was Ed Easton and Kath Hughes from Gaines Family Gift Shop, and this is the end of the show! Oh, pe people are not sure whether to be happy or sad there. Uh, thank you for watching Live at the Pleasance in association with audible.co.uk, uh, or uh, as I know it, audible.com. Audio, that's me, you wherever you are. Uh, before I listen to a podcast I like. Uh, you can't see, but the audience in this room, they're not a podcasting crowd. They don't, <laughs> I don't think they're getting the references I'm making. Uh, and so far we had tonight, uh, Samantha Baines. Uh, let's do a big round of applause for this one. Marcel Lucan. Josh Pugh. Sarah Schaefer. And Gaines Family Gift Shop. And uh, don't forget to come see me, Pia Novelli, at the Pleasance This in the Courtyard every night at 9.45pm, if that's the sort of thing you like. Uh, now, live at Pleasance TV, we'll be back tomorrow with more great guests and performance from the heart of the Fringe, so make sure you join us then on Facebook or on the YouTube channel. But for now, thank you and goodbye! <laughs>
I've always been a warrior. As a child, I remember hearing a joke about a chicken and panicking. Did he make it across or what? <laughs>